Now, Kalia, hold your paper up. I'm gonna cut it in two with my whip. I couldn't. I'm scared. Ah, Kalia, that's supposed to go in bin 17. A4 oh. white paper. Michael, you're so annoying. Go live under a bridge. Fine. Go! This is not your home! Every night, nearly 100 Aucklanders call the street their home, whether it's an abandoned building, under a bridge, or even just a doorway. So what is it to be homeless, and who can you turn to? Let's find out. This is Wolf Holt, team leader of the Auckland City Mission. How many people do you reckon are on homeless on the streets at the moment in Auckland? Our best guesstimate would be about 150 sleeping rough. And how many of those do you see here at the Mission? About 270 people a month. What sort of services does the Auckland City Mission offer? I guess the services revolve around meeting people's needs, improving the quality of life of people. And that can extend from first aid, people you would use this place as their mailing address. It's a place to be safe. There's food, obviously. Probably about 14,000 cups of tea and coffee a month. And do you have a big base of volunteers and staff to work here? Yeah, we do. Our volunteers are, are hugely, hugely valued. About 40 on the, on the books at the moment. Now, I know the New Zealand public are probably watching this and thinking, why don't they just get a job? Nobody who's on the streets asked to be on the streets. Nobody said, hey, this is a good career option for me or a good lifestyle option for me. You'll hear stories of university professors being on the streets, chefs. Do you think it oh, could happen to anyone? Oh, i I there by the grace of God. Uh, I don't really have any doubt about that at all. Yeah, you know, mental health, for instance, of which is a huge factor in people who are living on the street, as is drug and alcohol issues. People who started sleeping on the streets when they were seven, nine, ten, eleven. The streets were safer for them than their own homes. The streets provided for them a whānau that they had not experienced before. Thank you very much, Wolf, for talking to us. Very much appreciated. I'm going to go meet some of your clients and hear their stories. Great. This is Jeff. Jeff, right. how long have you been living rough for? Uh, about 10 years. About 10 years. Yeah. And where are you staying at the moment? Up in the cemetery on Grafton Bridge. Is that all your stuff that you've got in your bag there? No, no, this is my day-to-day -day stuff. Yep. My bedding, my stash. Right. You know, because there are people who carry the, everything they own on their back. Well, I would say God wanted me to do that. He'd have made me a bullock. See what I've got in here? I've got my books, my cup, yep. and extra rain tape, just in case this one gets wet. Well, that's just to do me for the day. Yeah, I, I spend a lot more time at the library, but I've always got a book, and uh, I can go into a bus station or something like that. How did you first get into living rough on the streets? Came up from Waiaki when my parents died and the, you know, the, the estate went to the bank. Yep. I, I'd been drinking with these fellows for a while. They said, oh, come and stay with us. Come and stay with us. Never mind paying rent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't see myself going back unless it starts snowing. Thank you very much, oh, Jeff, for cool. talking to that's us. Cool. You're the man. Not a problem. Cheers. Guys, meet Willis. Kia ora, Willis. How's it going? Yeah. How you going? Thanks for talking to us. Now, how long have you been sleeping rough for? Well, I've been on the streets off and on for about three and a half years now. Living out here, what are some of the biggest challenges that you come across, Willis? I'm in a relationship at the moment with my partner's pregnant. Oh, right. And uh, it's becoming a real concern to me. And how long have you been together now? Um, today is our anniversary, our 20 month anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks. Any celebrations in mind? Oh, uh, yeah, we've been celebrating most of the day. That's why she isn't here. What are the, some of the things that you enjoy about staying out here? But out here, it's kind of like a lot more free. Not to say that there's no rules out here, because there's a, there are a lot of rules, not only with the police and stuff, but between ourselves. People that live on the street, you've got yeah. your own code, yeah. code going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me how it first happened? I had a fallout with my flatmate. Yeah. He ripped me off clean. I had a successful job and that, and my boss kind of like ditched me because I was straight for two and a half years and I picked up alcohol. Well, I come up with a type of attitude thinking, well, I've forgotten nothing. No one can take it any, anything away from me. So I went on the streets and found my way and met all my friends again. Thank you very much, Willis. Very, Thanks. very humbling story, bro. 
Michael. Much appreciated. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. It's too much. Guys, meet Toko. Toko, how long have you been staying here for? Eight years. Eight years? Eight years in this place here. So you're quite happy staying out here, here? Well, well I'm moving from here in, uh, in about a month. Where are you off to? I'm going inside. This housing corpse got me uh... a flat. What about your dogs? Can you take your dogs with you? Nah, well, that's the problem, eh? Yeah. And I want these dogs to live, uh, you know, yeah. normal life instead of getting picked up by the pound. Yeah. So here you're doing a bit of music at the moment. Uh, yeah, I study music. Uh, I'm uh, actually I'm at the university. Yeah. The Auckland University. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh, doing a Maori course. Yeah. The real Maori. Yeah. Maori. Are you enjoying it? Oh yeah, it's a bit hard. Tu gua taku wairua, kerere ki ga tau mata, he ara he taku mahi me taku fai, te reo Maori. One dog sleeps in there. And he sleeps on here. See all these books here? All your school books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just lay here and, and, and study. You know? Well, you take care, my friend. You yeah. take good care of yourself. Sweet. Thank you very much to everyone who shared their stories with us. I feel very humbled and appreciative. I guess the message to take away from this is don't take for granted what you have, and also that the human spirit doesn't need material things to remain rich and warm. If you do want to help or find out more, do check out the website below, and I'll see you back at the house. Later. Nice story, Mikaela. So nice, it's inspired us to give away some free stuff. First up, we've got this Beach Street hoodie, or one that actually fits you. And a free flight and a glider, which is what I'm off to do after the break. And a signed copy of this Exponents album, signed by Jordan Luck, who I'm going to meet later on. Now, if you want to win these honeys, log onto our website and tell us what country the Magic Circus comes from. Now, 20 more, Sam. Come on. Go. Give it to me. Give it to me. Woo. Oh, you guys are so fat. <laughs> <laughs>